Guy Harvey, artist, scientist, angler, diver, conservationist, and family man. Journey with Guy to the world's greatest fishing waters, where every fish, every fight is a window on another world. Where every catch is a portrait from the deep waiting to be painted. Go exploring with Guy in the last wild country under the waves. Here in the Virgin Islands, blue marlin are available all year round, but anglers typically fish the famous North Drop in the full moon phase of June to October each year for the best results. So we head out to the North Drop with billfish scientist Dr. Jay Rooker. Jay, you're one of the few biologists who's really studying the early life history of, of billfish, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico. How did you get into this? Well, we've been, uh, we've been looking at bycatch records in the Gulf and uh, finding that the northern Gulf, there's significant bycatch for blue marlin, white marlin, and sailfish. And a couple of years ago, we started doing some satellite tagging. And we found that blue marlin uh, were in the Gulf of Mexico during the presumed spawning period. Uh, so it was a logical step to go out and see if we could find larvae and early juveniles on these potential spawning grounds. Perfect. And, you know, what vessels have they been using to get out there? We, we've been using the Holokai from the Oceanic Conservation Organization. And they've done a wonderful job of setting up the vessel to be able to pull our new stun nets. And we're collecting billfish right at the surface. So we're kind of skimming the upper 50 centimeters or half meter of the water column. We sort the sample immediately when it comes up, and uh, we pull many of the billfish out. But then when we bring the sample back to the lab, uh, oftentimes it takes some of the graduate students four, six, eight hours to pick through a sample. We may find 50 more billfish in that sample. You know, they're opportunistic feeders. They'll basically eat anything that will fit down the hatch. And I found, you know, in 240-pound blue marlin, 16, 18-pound wahoos, 20-pound you know, tunas, uh, the, the only limit to what they can eat is, you know, how, how big the item is to okay. fit down their throat. They can't chop it up like a barracuda or a wahoo or a shark. they got to eat the animal that they caught in its entirety. They're amazing feeders. As we saw in Ghana, one of the most exciting ways to fish for blue marlin is to use teasers and then pitch a bait rigged with a circle hook. We're also running hooks in the long rigger lures as a backup, and we did not have long to wait for a blue to show up. Tag placement is essential, and Jay has asked Captain Kurt to turn the marlin upright so the tag goes in the back muscle near the dorsal fin. Holding the marlin's head underwater is not always easy to do, and where there is a healthy local shark population, as there is along the North Drop, the marlin needs to be fully revived before release. Great, good job. 
job. Well done, Jay. That was excellent work, Thank man. You. Great angling. This successful release presents another opportunity for further study of this over-exploited species.